Welcome to the Royal We. My name is Kevin. Today we're going to talk about making radical changes in your life during your healing journey from toxic relationships and narcissistic abuse. The types of radical changes that take you steps closer to personal freedom. Now, I'm about to make two very radical changes right now. I'm going to make an inner change. I'm going to change my atmosphere to match where I'm at on the inside. And then two, I'm going to make an outward change, how I engage with others, how I engage with you, which by the way, I have a very important announcement for you during the second half of this video, so don't go anywhere. If you look at this atmosphere that I'm in right now, this background represents my heart and where it's been for the past couple of years. It's a little bit dark. It's withdrawn. Yes, it's a little bit isolating. There's nothing wrong with going into isolation, especially when you're processing the toxicity of the world, when you're processing narcissistic abuse. There's no shame in wanting to be alone. There's no shame in wanting to hide in the cover of darkness. King David, when he ran from King Saul, when he came face to face with that narcissistic malevolence, King David withdrew into a cave for anywhere from 10 to 14 years, where he processed the world, where he processed and wrestled with evil and malevolence. We need that cave time. We need that refuge. This is what that is to me. For a season, a caterpillar will crawl up and go into a cocoon, find refuge in it, hidden in isolation. While inside the cocoon, inside that darkness, it transforms into the butterfly. And then it breaks out of the cocoon. It breaks out of that dark place. Listen, I can go on and on all day about analogies, but I would rather show you because I'm ready right now to bust out. You make this change when the place you're in no longer serves you, where it no longer resonates with you. Swear I won't forget this Why do I regret this? In my mind reckless Thoughts are feeling endless Sitting up on breathless Anxiety's infectious I feel so defenseless Betrayed and embarrassed And I want to let you know that nobody can tell you to make this change If somebody were to have come to me two years ago And said, Kevin, your setting's kind of dark Maybe you should change that I would have said, get the heck out This is my inner space this is my sanctuary. This is my healing refuge. But now this place no longer resonates with me. I can't move on till I go. I feel so lost, never at home. Need to be strong, every breath hold. Cause I can't move on till I let go. I can't move on till I let go. I feel so lost, never at home. Need to be strong, every breath hold. Cause I can't move on till I let go. My heart no longer wants to give a message out of isolation, out of withdrawing into a safe place, a dark place. My heart now wants to change to a more inviting atmosphere, an atmosphere that welcomes people into the positive side now of healing, the positive side of going back out into a very toxic world, but emboldened. Here's to change, right? Here's to making a mess. Of everything I do between making videos and content and publishing stuff and taking one-on-one -on -one appointments with you all, I would have to say that my one-on-one -on -one time during appointments is by far my, my most cherished aspect of this. I talk with people for an hour at least on the phone and it goes by like minutes for me. And I could do three, four of those in a row. That, that helps you understand a little bit more about who I am as an individual. So if I can capture that element of myself and now bring it into a public situation with people uh, in a presentation or a discussion, then I think it's worth a shot. I'm scared of it. I don't know what it's like to rent a room. I don't know what it's like to put that all together, but we're going to find out together. And I hope this motivates you to break out of your comfort zone with whatever you're doing and try something new. So we're gonna go into Lifetime Gym here and we're going to find out about renting a room. Let's go. Hopefully they'll be okay with this. 
Hi, how are you? So I'm here to talk about renting a presentation room. And the presentation room is for these people. Way to change. I had to leave to find my way. Caught up in a daydream. I be in my mind up there almost daily. It's how I okay. Wow. Safely. It's how I understand what I want. All right. This is a... Uh, you bad things. Wow. This is, this is definitely fancy. Okay. So it's like a movie theater, kind of. And it sits about 25. 25 people. She told me to sit down in one of these chairs just to see how comfortable it is. And, oh my goodness. Oh, and they recline. You could come and if you wanted to, you can sleep instead of listen to me during the presentation. These are really comfortable. It's, it's like a movie theater uh, seating arrangement here. It really is. So this is awesome drinks, beverages, coffee. Do y'all have uh, mask mandates for people coming in? Um, no, we are just required to follow like county, state ordinances, mandates. So whatever so. the Missouri in the county right. ordinances, okay, yeah. that's good. And thank God Missouri is a little bit uh, loose on those. No, it's not like you're not going to get kicked out. No one's going to fight you if you're one way or the other here. So you're welcome to come here. Um, any of you out of state, you're welcome to come. Really, if you want to fly and meet me, that's that's fantastic. I'll, that'd be great. I'll buy you coffee. But right now, as of now, it's March, March 12th. Let me write it down for you. Yes, yeah, she's going to write it down for me. March 12th. March 12th at 11 o'clock in the morning. So it'll be a lunch, maybe snacks, uh, maybe heading back over into the cafeteria area and having, you know, meet and greet, whatever. Might be March Madness by then. <laughs> March Madness. There you are. It's a done deal. It's a done deal.